Tra la la, tra la la, tra la 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 la, tra la 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 la. Hey! Did you guys see a very short transvestite go this way? Don't worry. <laughs> Yes, I've just announced to the entire nation who can't sleep. Um, I got nothing. We're very excited here. This is the big post-Labor Day show here. And, uh, everyone's very excited. Not only the excitement of Labor Day when no one else is working but set me. Uh, and then uh, it's today, you know, the day after Labor Day when the kids go back to school. And I... <laughs> I had a very big lunch today, I did. I did. You know, I mean, I know it's what, the time in your region now, but let me say that I had a very big lunch. It made me a bit sleepy. Do you know how sometimes you get a very big lunch and then you just have to, oh, lie down like that? Well, that's how I feel. I actually can't, um, you know when people buy their groceries and then take them home and they have their groceries all, all week? I can't do that because I've got a very addictive personality. So if I buy groceries and take them home, I eat them. <laughs> Right there. I'm like a snake. I just lie down and you can see the shape of the groceries inside my... Anyway, I went to a French restaurant today in Los Angeles. They have them. It was awesome. You go in, they surrender, you sit down. They... <laughs> No, it's very, very good restaurant. This and uh, they, what we would call French fries, they don't call them French fries. They just call them fries. <laughs> Actually, they don't. They call them pom frites. You know why they do that? Because it sounds a little more gay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, know your customer. It's L.A. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So I had a uh, sandwich and some fries. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just saw a very short transvestite. <laughs> <laughs> just go and look over there. And if it is a small transvestite, <laughs> I'll capture him. <laughs> and I'll bring him back and he'll be on. I'm like, no, come this way, you gorgeous, diminutive, sassy bitch. Uh, <laughs> I know I'm going to get letters now. Craig, I'm a diminutive transvestite. And this is just the kind of prejudice we're working against. I know, I know, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to bring attention to the cause. Well, that's something I can relate to. We'll be right back. Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, sponsored by Match.com. Find someone special in six months or get six months free. See site for details. What are you looking at? 
All expectant. What are you looking at? You look expectant too. Do you like my new eye thing? I'm trying a new eye thing. I didn't dare try it before until we were in high def. It's kind of predatory and creepy, but strangely sexy at the same time. <laughs> or maybe it's just like a gay vampire, I don't know. <laughs> then you'll never guess what happened. <laughs> it's a great day for America, everybody. Yes, it is. It is. It's a great day. A great day for the beautiful city of San Francisco. The workers there today repaired the, the, the Bay Bridge uh, just a, an hour before the rush hour this morning. They had they'd been working round the clock because uh, they, they fixed a huge crack in the bridge that was discovered by a construction worker. Actually, it's San Francisco. So it was discovered by a construction worker, an Indian, a cop, and a bank. <laughs> All right, there's your late night joke. Can we get on with it now? Do you know the price of gold shot up way up today? Right now, my nipple piercings are worth more than $1,000 each. <laughs> Don't worry, my pretties. I'll never take your shiny jewels away. <laughs> it's not a great day for America's school children. Back to school day today. So on behalf of America's parents, God bless your schools. Thank God. <laughs> I can watch some cartoons by myself. I love the summertime, but I can only spend so much time at Chuck E. Cheese. Do you know what I'm saying? I went, I went so much this summer, the giant rat knows me. He's like, hey, morning, Craig. I'm like, morning, Chuck. I'm getting a bit tired of their pizza as well. Although I, I admit, I still love the ball pit. By the way, the ball pit's the name of a new club on Santa Monica Boulevard. <laughs> they have a two twink minimum. Uh... <laughs> hey, that's a great joke for a very small audience. <laughs> I can wait. Anyway, the, the, the kids go, when the kids went back to school today, they get a very special surprise because President Obama gave them a speech just for them. He said, work hard, stay in school. He said that some kids don't value education. They think they'll be rich if they just, you know, get on TV or something. I'm like, ha! <laughs> ha! As someone who dropped out of school and is on TV, he's right, kids. <laughs> don't end up like me. CBS in the middle of the night. <laughs> anyway, as predicted, you know, a lot of people are throwing a hissy fit about Obama's speech. One Republican said that Obama's speech is pushing, pushing his socialist agenda. <laughs> and I suppose telling kids not to do drugs is promoting health care reform. Is that what you're saying? And some Republicans were so mad they had Dick Cheney give a rebuttal. He showed other kids the proper way to stuff a geek into a locker and... <laughs> How to administer the purple nurple. <laughs> the left, the left wing's no better. The teachers' union said the president should back up his speech by raising the teachers' salaries. Now, I agree that teachers are underpaid, but I don't understand the logic here. Because if you pay your teachers, you know, the logic being that if you pay the teachers more, the kids get a better education. But any teachers I know, they give their all, they, they give all the information they've got. It doesn't matter how much you pay them. They're, they're, they're kind of like the opposite of me. It's not like teachers are in an old movie or something and they're like, you said, yeah, maybe I remember something about the Revolutionary War. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I do. What's it worth to you, huh? Uh, would an apple help you? Ah, uh, more like a $20 bill, kid. All right. It was the Battle of Yorktown, but you never heard it from me, all right? <laughs> I liked that. That was like a play there, wasn't it? Was that good? I was like, I was the teacher, and then I was the kid, and there was drama and tension. <laughs> It was crap, but it was crap. It was crap with acting, which is what CBS is all about. That, that actually, that should be, that should be our big fall slogan. Crap with acting. And everybody can turn around and go like that. CBS, crap with acting. 
Oh yeah. No, no, anyway, uh, uh, whether or not you voted for Barack Obama, though, you cannot deny that his life, his life story, is a shining example uh, uh, of the power of education. Now, uh, let's have a look at his life. He was born in Kenya, and <laughs> studied seven days a week, learning how to forge Hawaiian birth certificates. Then he was. Ex <laughs> Accepted at the best high school in Russia, the <laughs> Russian capital of New York City, and then he, uh, he did his postgraduate work at the Bring Down America Academy, <laughs> otherwise known as Harvard Law School. I'm not kidding about that part. <laughs> you know these whack jobs that are saying that are criticizing Obama for saying to the kids, uh, wash your hands. <laughs> I'm like, oh, come on, doctors say that school children are the most vulnerable to the swine flu. And some people are uh, going after Obama for reminding the, the kids about the hygiene. This is an angle I, I would never would have thought. Every single kid washing their hands? Who's going to pay for all that talk? <laughs> who's going to pay for it? I'll tell you who. I'll tell you who. Um, guns. Guns are going to have to pay. Now, I think what happens is that President Obama has a bunch of speeches planned this week. Today, the school kids, tomorrow he's speaking to the joint session of Congress. Now, school children in Congress, very different, of course. <laughs> one is an unruly bunch of maniacs who pick their noses and read at grade school level, and the other one is school children. So, right there, you yeah. Now, I... I think... I think Obama got his speeches mixed up when he said set goals, Congress should, you, you, they should try that, you know. <laughs> Work harder. That would be good advice for the Senate. Wash your hands. It's <laughs> good advice for Senator Larry Craig, right there. Wash your hands. <laughs> the teacher knows what you did in the bathroom. <laughs> This is true. After I got this job at uh, my old high school in Scotland. What? You're not from originally from America? No. Huh? <laughs> my old high school asked if I would come and speak to the students, you know, because they thought I'd have an inspiring story to tell the kids. I said, no. <laughs> what am I going to tell the kids in the school? Kids, here's what you do. You be a blackout drunk for 15 years, snort every powder you see, <laughs> get divorced twice, and all your dreams will come true. <laughs> all right, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. And now, celebrities read excerpts from Craig's book. I'm going to read you an extract from a wonderful new book. It's the autobiography of Craig Ferguson. <laughs> <laughs> but don't let that put you off. I'm going to read it now. <laughs> I've just turned to a little bit at random in this wonderful book. <laughs> Inside the busy restaurant, my mother struck up a conversation with a large Rastafarian gentleman Ooh. <laughs> who was enjoying a herbal, or as Americans say, an herbal cigarette. Not a gerbil cigarette, a herbal. <laughs> as they chatted, the fumes of the Rasta's joint <laughs> kept wafting in my mother's face. She just waved them away, apparently to little effect, because I'd never seen my mother put away more food at one sitting than she did at that brunch. She, she was very giggly <laughs> that afternoon when we drove back to L.A. and she slept most of the way. <laughs> well, that's, that's tasteful. And <laughs> probably have your mother arrested in Scotland, I would have thought. That was Celebrities Read Excerpts from Craig's Book. American on Purpose is available September 22nd from all finer bookstores. If you experience an erection lasting longer than four hours, please call a doctor or Craig Ferguson. Uh, post Labor Day show where we're also celebrating. I had a reasonably large lunch and I'm feeling a bit sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> 
They can't all be Emmy-nominated shows. <laughs> In fact, apparently none of them can be <laughs> Emmy-nominated shows. <laughs> Do we have time for email? Yeah. yeah. Hey. <laughs> Actually, no, we don't have time for emails because we've got some very moving piece of special television that will get us an Emmy nomination. <laughs> but apparently we can't do that here. We get out puppets, I take my clothes off, I jump in the -la -la. fountain, I do <laughs> Let me tell you something. Do you know I got the copy of the Emmy magazine from January this year? That's when I get it now. And the Emmy, they have a magazine for the Emmys, you know, in case you want to win one or everything. And then, and on the cover, you know who's on the cover of the Emmy magazine in January? The Housewives of New York City. That show. I know! I'm at the Housewives of New York City? That this is excellence in television, is it? <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, because I was thinking maybe The Wire or The Sopranos. No! <laughs> I wasn't nominated for an Emmy this year. <laughs> but I haven't let it get to me. <laughs> Luckily, my guest tonight is Neil Patrick Harris. Ooh. He's hosting the Emmys this year. <laughs> but I won't be there. I have a date with a short transvestite. See, we didn't have time for the emails. Actually, actually, we do. We do. Now, this is one of the difficult things in a show that has no band. How do you move from point A to point B without the music? Da -da -da. He's moving across the stage. Is he moving across the stage? You bet he is. He's got friends. They've got musical instruments. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll just do it myself. We'll, we'll work it out. He's moving across the stage. He's got friends. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Hey. Thanks, you guys. All right. <laughs> do we have time for an email? You bet we do, guys in, guys in the band. Do we have a jingle, guys in the band? Here comes the emails. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is from Ron in Evansville, Illinois, um, Indiana, um, or India, I'm not sure. Uh, that Ron says, Dear Craig, in case you're a numbers nut, I'm not. <laughs> this is from Joey in Phoenix. Hey, what up, Joey? Oh! <laughs> I thought I, was, I thought I was being a bit sleepy because of my big lunch, so I overcompensated. <laughs> now I think we're back on an even kick. <laughs> this is from Joey in Phoenix. Oh, it's a great time. <laughs> <laughs> Craig, you should read the names of the people that sent you emails even if you don't read them. This way, those people would know that at least you had them, but they weren't good enough to read on the air. <laughs> Two birds, one stone. <laughs> I like you, Joy. I hereby nominate you for an Emmy. Uh, this is from Grega in Ljubljana in Slovenia. Well, how do they get CBS in Slovenia? Oh, on the Google tube! Oh! On the, uh, would you, 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 you betcha, you, YouTube. On the YouTube, of course. <laughs> Gregor says, Dear Craig, you are so popular in the Great Republic of Slovenia, we are making a statue of you. In which, in which pose should we portray you? <laughs> Here's the pose, try this one. 
try this. Let me just try this. I'd like to thank the Academy. This is, this is a real surprise and a great honor. Thank you. We'll be right back with Neil Patrick Harris. during the commercial break. It was so awesome. The studio audience were clapping along to pre-recorded music and they looked so clever. I wanted to throw them a fish. My first and only guest tonight, well, not only guest, but my first uh, talking guest, one of my many guests this evening, some of my guests tonight are coming out now in single person form. <laughs> my first guest, my, I'm making myself laugh, that's got to count for something. My first guest tonight is uh, Emmy nominated. <laughs> Emmy nominated. tonight is the Emmy nominated star of How I Met Your Mother, which premieres on Monday, September 21st on the Great CBS Network. Take a look at this. How do you keep a... <laughs> Brunch is too cool. Neil Patrick Harris, everybody. <laughs> I feel, I feel like it's magic week because you're usually here for magic week and when you're here there's an air of magic in the studio. Is there? I was the host of magic week. Although, are you going to do another one this year? Yeah, I would like to, yes. You yes. must. You yeah, must. No, we will. We will because Where else that's... do magicians work? Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> this is true. Magicians are reasonably cheap and <laughs> this is my strategy for an Emmy. Oh. Wait a Special second. Special services to magic Emmy. You, you weren't nominated this year? I think it was something to do with uh, the, uh, my citizenship or something. You have to be an American, for sure. I am an American! Oh. I, and then what about all these shows that are made in Canada that nobody watches that, takes, uh, that take Emmys every year? You know the ones I'm talking about. Sure. I hope you do, because I don't. That, uh... <laughs> was it Mad Men? Mad Men? Is that made in Canada? No. Uh. <laughs> But if it was, if it was... It would prove your point, which is... Ludicrous. <laughs> it's a ludicrous point. Right. You're hosting, though, you're hosting. Can I just say... What? In high def, you look very dapper. Thank you very much. <laughs> just more than ever. Yeah. Everything is just bright and sharp and sparkly. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> damn sight more than I got. I think you're doing well. <laughs> What is it's good, this? isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, sparkly water. Hint, How? You know, just a little bit of passion fruit. How? 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 <laughs> Are you doing a lot of proper... Uh, pre what, what, have you got this one? It's vodka. You haven't got the swine flu, have you? It's vodka. If it's vodka, things are going to get very different around here. <laughs> is it vodka? No, it's not. <laughs> it's the best show ever. Might not get me an Emmy, but I'll get some kind of attention. Ah. <laughs> what were you it's asking? Not, no, what's interesting, that's flat water, this is fizzy water. I thought you would be a fizzy water person, are you not? Are you some kind of flat water communist? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the fizzy water's not good when you're a guest, because it makes you want to burp. And that's never good when you're in the middle of a story. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to tell us a story? Uh, no, I don't know. No, 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 no. Now, listen, I'm worried about you hosting the Emmys. Why? Because it's a big, 
It's the big deal here. This is the big number. This is the this is the creme de la creme. This is the top of the heap. You're under the spotlight. They're going to be looking at you. All these people that hate everybody are going to be watching you. It is a very judgy show, isn't it? Yes, it is. Did you see it last year that. with the reality people hosting it? Yeah, that was... Oh, boy. <laughs> Were you there? I was there. I was nominated last year. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I play this game all did you, uh, long. Did you, did you win? I did not. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to play this all night. <laughs> so, uh, now no, you no, they're all right. I, I don't know. It's, it's going to be a really fun show. Are you going to do a big I, thing? Are you going to do a, uh, like a um, musical number? Or? We're honestly about two weeks, just shy of two weeks out, and we have to sort of lock start locking in the structure of what we're going to do. So we have a lot of things up in the air-ish. I don't know. I don't know what's best. If it needs to be like, if the host needs to perform a lot initially to yes. like win them over. Yes. Or, or yes. maybe it's better to be more Johnny Carson-like and come out Steve Allen style and like just be don't the host that. and do the thing. Don't, no, don't do that. Yeah, but it's not really about the host performing. It's yes, about... it is. Really? Yeah. No, it is. I really Listen, don't when know. you did the Tonys, you were great, right? You know why? But I saved my performance to the end. Ah, but you know, also true, but what you did was you were more entertaining than anybody else on the stage the entire night. <laughs> <laughs> Neil. I love a lot of those actors, and I love Broadway, but you were more entertaining than anyone else on that stage that night, and that's cool. what you've got to do at the Emmys. All right, but I'll here's try. the good news. Most of the people at the Emmys will be on television. They're not that entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> I, that is interesting, I think, because the people who are who are on television that you're watching aren't used to that big 6,000 seat stadium, the Nokia right, right, theater right. where we're going to be. So it is weird to see people who you see every day acting on stage being nervous and like uncomfortable. Whereas and the Tonys was the opposite, you know. Yeah. Those are all people who are on stage all the time, all the time. And a lot of them were uh, drunk, let's be honest. Too, right? <laughs> As will I. <laughs> I like your style. Hence the vodka. <laughs> well said. <laughs> so you're nominated for How I Met Your Mother. I am. Really? Yeah. What I, else I would right. I be nominated for? I was right. For? I got it right. <laughs> <laughs> what else would I be nominated for? I don't for? know. You know, to, what, the Tonys, you could have been nominated for? You know, this was the first year they cut out that category. I know, because that's the category I would have been nominated. Best performance yeah, 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 in yeah, a yeah. variety <laughs> thing. Uh, yeah, they took that. You know what? The only one year I was nominated, I lost to Barry Manilow. Wow. <laughs> but Hence to all be the fair, it, pirate jokes. But it's, it, you know, it, it's Barry Manilow, though. I mean, he's entertaining. He's the master. Of what? <laughs> of his personal domain, Vegas domain. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, are you doing? Are you still in contact with magicians and doing magic and stuff like that? Are you doing any magic yourself? Um, no. You know, my best friend Ed uh, is the magic consultant on the Britney Spears show now. He was he's he touring was around with Britney Spears. Really? Yeah, he's in the big circus show. He's on a bus for two years, which Does I think is pretty exciting. Oh yeah, that's very exciting. Now, he was here. He is the guy that pulls the duck out of his pants. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> I mean, that's a trick. I mean, it's not like, it's not like you, you know, you can watch that trick and go, ah, oh, I can see how he did that. You can't. You, or go, oh, well, I know, I think a guy at my college used to do that trick. Nobody does no, that trick. It's, trick. He, he, and the thing is, he walks in, you don't, I never heard a quack come out of his pants. <laughs> now, I've had people here whose pants have quacked, and they don't have, and they don't have a duck in there. No. Interesting. Yeah. And sometimes that happens to me. You'll quack your pants? <laughs> I hope you that doesn't quite... happen tonight. No. <laughs> it happened earlier on, but I just, uh, you never mind. It might happen to you at the end if you might quack your pants. Uh, I probably will no, quack No, you'll pants. be fine. Now listen, what about the, are you friends with a lot of people in show business? Because it's going to be awkward when you have to, you know, reject some of them and embrace others for their winning or and or losing. Hmm, I hadn't really contemplated that. I, I don't know, I'm going to be up there like, multitasking like mad so I don't think I'll really interact with almost anyone. Well, like, in your hosting like the host capacity. says like and here's two people who are gonna do a thing and then yeah. they do their thing and leave and then you say and now here's watch this clip and then here's this pe person that does a thing. You don't what really I do here every night. <laughs> But then you get segments, so I didn't, the host of, a, of an award show never really sits and like talks with people, right? Well, they're that's just where they're going wrong, clearly. <laughs> so, that, that would be a good set for... like this. <coughs> and, uh, well, you when... can, obviously you can have this. This is just too crap even for the Emmys, but they are. Uh... <laughs> this is pretty Emmy-tastic, this set. Now, it is kind of, isn't it? You know what, the way to get an Emmy is, I think, is to do a very special show. Like? You know, where you cry a lot. <laughs> 
<laughs> what would you do if you, if you had that opportunity right now? <laughs> Craig, what's the matter? What's the matter, man? <laughs> My pants quacked. <laughs> right there when I did that thing. No, Emmy. I don't buy it. No, come I don't on. buy it. That was great. It. No tears. No, I you could have at least gotten... All right, all right, all right, all right. Do it, do it again, then. Yeah, do okay. it again. All right. Craig. <laughs> Craig, for God's sake, man, what's the problem? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> My pants quacked. here performing Till You Come To Me from his album Vagabond, which is in stores today. <laughs> Please welcome Spencer Day, everybody. Spencer Day. A sleepless night in the city No peace and quiet City. It's hotter than the water from a boiler in the basement of hell In this low in a walk of broken down hotel Can't turn the cracks on the ceiling Flats on my back and I'm feeling Lower than the roaches in the tunnels of the one in the night and the clock tells me that I'm half past losing my mind Through the tick-tock tick, I can hear the faucet drip When the neighbors brawl, I can hear them through the wall But I'm waiting, I keep waiting Cause I want
Look, I'd like to apologize for my behavior tonight. I let my bitterness get in the way of my impartiality and I, I spoke harshly about the uh, Academy of Television, what are they called? <laughs> Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. Well, oh, this is an art and a science. <laughs> yeah. Middle-aged white guy being sarcastic in the middle of the night. That's science, all right, whoa. <laughs> Take this, Einstein. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to apologize. I let my bitterness at being excluded from the Hollywood community get in the way of my otherwise fabulous life. <laughs> and I was slightly disparaging about the CBS network. <laughs> who are, of course, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> but the good news is this there's a statue of me in where is the country <laughs> what slovenia. slovenia now let me just tell you this you might not know much about slovenia and neither do i <laughs> but i'll tell you one thing i know about slovenians they know their tv <laughs> and by tv i don't mean short transvestite <laughs> You talking about me? No, no. Just get back there. Put on women's clothes or something. <laughs> I think, I, you know, I lost track of the show because I had such a large lunch. I, I, I broke with my normal routine. Normally, I just have gruel at the, uh, at the CBS canteen. <laughs> I'm kidding, CBS don't have a canteen. <laughs> they have a vending machine. 50 cents you can put in and you get a bowl of gruel. <laughs> and if you ask for more, it gives you an electric shock. <laughs> it's the most awesome fun you can have. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. Oh, I didn't do my thing tonight very much. I started doing my gay vampire eye thing and then I forgot about it. See, that's what happens when you let anger get in the way of your art. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Neil was good. I, I thought that was an Emmy, Emmy-worthy <laughs> performance he gave here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> do you know why I know something? They actually asked me to host. I said, ooh la la! <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, they did not ask me. <laughs> nah, they, did, they, did, they didn't ask me to host. Again. No, they didn't, they didn't ask me. I wanted them to ask me so that I could say, ooh la la! But they didn't. They didn't ask me. I think they knew that he would be better than me. Oh, there they go with their whole quality thing again. <laughs> Gosh, I, I think we learned a lot on the show tonight, didn't we? Sorry, everybody, I'm keeping you up. Off you go to bed or enjoy the sham wow. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>